Thank you, everybody. Let me begin by thanking our history-making president, President Mangelsdorf, for the kind introduction to have me here today, the kind invitation from she and the board of trustees, the facilitation from my former professor, Gerald Gamm, for allowing me to be back here today to celebrate all of you, the class of 2023. I got to tell you, it is so cool to be here on campus, not just as an alum, but as your commencement speaker and the 48th governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We got some Pennsylvanians here. I also want you to know I am proud and humbled to be standing here in the same spot, looking over the same field where I addressed the class of 1995 during my own commencement 28 years ago. I'm thinking today about my time here and how it prepared me for the road ahead. How I've routinely drawn on my experiences here at U of R to make decisions over the years. I'm smiling as I look out on all of you thinking about the day I graduated with my buddies, including two of them who came back here today with me to be a part of this ceremony. Adam Keats and Seth Fox right over there. Those friendships, you know, friendships I made here at U of R have lasted three decades. I'm thinking about how this was the place I was first inspired academically by the late Professor Richard Fenno, who taught me to love the science of political science. And I'm thinking about the person who taught me the value and strength of diversity and respect for others, of being meaningfully involved in the community around you. And that is the late, great Dean Paul Burgett. I miss them both, but I know they're smiling on us today. Hell, I mean, it's not snowing, so we know that they're smiling on us today. They had a profound impact on my life. And I presume each member of this class of 2023 has someone here at U of R, maybe on the stage, maybe out in the crowd, who deeply impacted you along the way, who you think of, and who I believe you will draw inspiration from for many years to come. So let's give thanks and praise to those who helped you get to this moment your parents and family and loved ones who are here with us today, and especially to the great faculty, staff, and administrators here at the University of Rochester. <laughs> Graduates, I want you to know I offer my sincere congratulations to each and every one of you. This is a remarkable achievement, and for the class of 2023, I think it is especially impressive. Look, I know this class hasn't had the traditional college experience. Yeah, you went to class and joined student organizations, hung out with friends on the quad on the rare day when the sun came out and the snow melted. You probably wore shorts that day, too. <laughs> you studied in the stacks, you ate pizza in the pit. And by the way, I want you to know another thing I took from this place is I still dip my pizza in blue cheese dressing, something I learned here at U of R. But I think it's, I'm hearing some boos over here. <laughs> but, but I think it's all, I can't believe you booed me over the blue cheese. I think it's also, though, important that we acknowledge that your undergrad years were filled with challenges and obstacles that we couldn't have imagined during your convocation four years ago. You got on campus freshman year in the fall of 2019, and just as you were finding your feet in your second semester, the world stopped. And when classes resumed online, you had to relearn every strategy you had for success. But you didn't let that stop you. At every turn, you showed incredible resilience. You persevered and you overcame whatever obstacles were put in your way. And what makes all of you uniquely prepared for the world you're going into is that you have not let those obstacles define you. 
Now listen, while I wasn't a student in the middle of a global pandemic here, I know what it's like to have your plans change in the middle of college. L let me explain. Just like so many of you, I had big dreams and a plan when I came here to U of R. I grew up watching my parents serve our community. My dad was the local pediatrician, my mom a school teacher. Both of them made a difference in our neighbors' lives. And I knew I wanted to do the same here at U of R. So when I got to campus my freshman year, I planned to follow in my dad's footsteps and become a doctor. I came here in part because of the great academics and the university's connection to Strong Memorial Hospital. Now, not only that, I was a pretty darn good basketball player in high school. And so I thought for sure I would earn a spot on the men's team. So my big dream when I came to U of R was this. I planned to be the first doctor to get drafted by the Sixers and play in the NBA. <laughs> by the way, shout out to any Sixers fans. That was rough last night, but we're going to win in game seven. <clears throat> now listen, while I wasn't sure about the whole Sixers part, I was absolutely certain about playing for the Yellow Jackets and earning a pre-med degree here. But on the same day during my first semester at U of R, three things happened that would alter my path and lead me to standing right here today. First, I took a big test. The deciding test for my grade in a required class for pre-med. And out of 165 points, I got a four. Like, <laughs> four total points. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And to make, by the way, to make matters worse, I believe you got two free points if you just wrote your TA's name correctly on the exam. My professor was so nice, he brought me back and he said, maybe being a doctor just wasn't gonna be in the cards for me. Later that day, I went to basketball practice, which was gonna be my escape from my academic misery until I found out that day from Coach Near that I was cut from the men's basketball team. <laughs> All on the same day. Not my best day, obviously. But a third thing happened that day. Someone knocked on my dorm room door in Tiernan. Shout out to anybody from Tiernan. Huh? <laughs> yep. And they asked me to run for the student senate. And when I asked, why would I do that? They said, well, you got nothing going on in your life right now anyway. So, so what do you have to lose, Josh? So I ran, and I won. And, and that early experience in student government, in advocating for my fellow students, actually opened up my eyes to a new avenue of public service that I could follow in my parents' footsteps. It actually inspired me to start studying political science under Professor Gam and others, and eventually a career working in government to improve the lives of others. I got knocked down pretty hard that day my freshman year, but I persevered. And the lessons I learned here at U of R have continued to serve me in the 28 years since. Just by virtue of you being here today, each and every one of you knows what it's like to face challenges, to persevere, to overcome them. And I'm told that some of you actually made it through organic chemistry and calculus. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. You've overcome so much during these challenging four years at U of R in hard times. This community has come together to hold one another up. And in good times, you've come together to celebrate one another. That is inspiring. And it's your example and your leadership that we need now more than ever, not just here at U of R, but all across this great country. Because we need leaders like you who can bring us together around a shared vision for a better future. Leaders who are battle-tested and ready to take their ideas out in the world. And hear me on this, leaders who don't sweat the small stuff because they dealt with the big stuff. Leaders like Fernanda Sesto, who helped, who helped teach girls in the local community about coding in STEM with Girls Who Code. Not only that, Fernanda launched a new club to help her fellow students about venture capital and how it can help young entrepreneurs get their business off the ground. You should go talk to the board chair about that. <laughs> leaders, like, leaders like Morgan Gillespie. Let's hear it from Morgan. 
Yeah, Morgan, you performed groundbreaking research on gender bias among American voters, upending the accepted wisdom about how voters view women who run for office. Morgan also served as an associate justice on the All-Campus Judicial Council, where she and her colleagues push for policies that are applied equitably to every student, regardless of their background. Maybe we'll have an opening on the Supreme Court soon. We'll get you in there, all right? <laughs> Leaders like Bryn Murphy Stanley, who worked extensively in the Rochester community to connect black youth to the stories of their elders and created a museum exhibit that tells their stories and ensures the history of the black community in Rochester lives on. Fernanda and Morgan, Bryn, they deserve a lot of credit for what they've accomplished. But I know they're not alone. You see, their accomplishments reflect the spirit and the drive of this entire class of 2023. I've had the good fortune to spend time with 2023 graduates. And let me just say this. You are the ones I want on the front lines addressing the big challenges of tomorrow. You have that resiliency. You got knocked down and you got right back up even stronger. You have the tenacity to fight for a better world that you know you deserve. And we are all counting on you to help us tackle those challenges. Challenges that a lot of so-called leaders have frankly failed to address for too long. We're counting on you to meet this moment and combat climate change and gun violence. We're counting on you to not only We're counting on you to not only harness the potential of AI, but be thoughtful about the ethical questions this rapid advancement presents. We're counting on you to create a more just society so that everyone can get a fair shot in our country, no matter what you look like, where you come from, who you love or who you pray to, we are counting on you. And yes, yes, we are counting on you to run for office, to challenge the status quo, to bring the energy of your generation into our politics. For those of you from Pennsylvania, I would just respectfully ask that you not run against me. <laughs> but no matter what you decide to do, every community and every industry needs leadership and vision right now. And I know this class is up to that challenge because this class will persevere through anything. And no matter what challenges you encounter in life, I know you're ready to meet them and overcome them because that is what a U of R education has taught you. Perseverance is part of the U of R legacy. It's literally represented by our official flower, the dandelion, which can thrive and actually bring beauty to the most unexpected and challenging places. It tracks with our motto, Meliora. It's about always striving to do a little better, to make yourself a, a little stronger and smarter, to make our community more fair and more prosperous, to help others see light in the midst of darkness, to see a dandelion as a flower, not as the weed that some people say it is. A U of R education is about taking the knowledge, the passion, the resiliency that you learned here with you, and then doing your part to make the world even better. My faith teaches me that no one is required to complete the task, but neither are we free to refrain from it. That means each of us has a responsibility to get off the sidelines, to get in the game, and to do our part. Now look, I know we may not all share the same faith, but I know we share the same values because we are graduates of this fine institution, and it's the lifeblood of this place. You of our graduates have literally changed the world. Consider this, Dr. Michael Gottlieb, who identified AIDS in 1981 and whose research no doubt saved lives, graduated from here. So did Donna Strickland, a pioneer in laser technology who won the Nobel Prize for inventing high-intensity laser pulses that are now integral for corrective eye surgery, medical imaging, 
and industrial machining. Or Paul, Paul Merton, the astronomer who discovered the first black hole in space. You see, here at U of R, we boast Nobel laureates, famous actors, cabinet secretaries to presidents, astronauts, and more who have overcome the obstacles and made a meaningful impact. U of R graduates have left their mark on every industry, every sector of our economy. And I know this class is going to do the same because you already are. You're already leading your community forward from the challenges of these past four years. You are resilient and you're tough. You got knocked down and then you got back up and you never let yourself feel robbed of a typical college experience of all four years due to this pandemic. Instead, no, no, no. You found a way to let this time infuse you with a toughness and tenacity that will be your tool to overcome any obstacle that you confront in the future. You built community together. You supported and loved one another. And the challenges you faced here never quashed your spirit of innovation and ingenuity. And that's exactly what our world needs more of right now. And if I know one thing, it's that this class of 2023 is going to meet this moment. So as you go out in the world, graduates, draw wisdom from your time here at U of R. Draw comfort from the friends you've made here as I've done. Draw inspiration from the fellow graduates who have come before you. And live out the words of Francis Bellamy, a fellow alum from the class of 1876, who wrote the original Pledge of Allegiance, which calls on us to pursue liberty and justice for all. Use that Meliora spirit to go out and make our world more just, more free for all people. And like a dandelion, bring light to those unexpected places that need it most. Summon that strength you developed here to persevere and conquer. And as you do that, you will not only find individual success, but you will make our world a better place. Congratulations, graduates. Meliora, Meliora, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.